What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Adidas AM for NYC. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Also, huge thank you to Adidas NYC for having me out to the AM for NYC event and gifting me a pair. That's pretty crazy. It was a really cool event and space. You should definitely check out that vlog. There'll be a link at the top of the screen. Also, if you live in the city, the event will be going till the end of the week, so it's definitely worth checking out. But to give you all a little bit of background behind the Speed Factory and the AM for NYC, basically what's going on is Adidas has created this brand new data-driven design process that's coming to life in this fully automated factory called the Speed Factory. And there's a whole bunch of really cool things about the Speed Factory, like you can create custom shoes and custom fits for specific people. The actual manufacturing process of the shoes is crazy fast, way faster than a normal factory. It's just a really cool brand new approach to design and manufacturing that I think is a really great step forward. As for the actual sneaker that was just unveiled in New York, it's part of the AM4 running series. This series is all city based, so last year we saw a version that was specific to London, to Paris, and to LA. And the reason for each pair being specifically released in different cities is that each pair is specifically tailored for that city. So the way Adidas went about doing this is they worked with athletes and runners from each one of these cities to design a shoe that specifically fits their needs. For example, on the New York pair, because runners will mainly be running on concrete concrete and pavement, there's actually a little bit more boost in the forefoot when compared to the previous pairs because runners in New York are primarily going to be running on harder surfaces. But now that you have a little bit more insight into the background of the AM for NYC, let's take a look at the shoe. Jumping right into the materials, the entire upper is made up of this pretty thick black knit. It's not as stretchy or soft as the prime knit that you find in Ultra Boost, but the whole reason behind this shoe isn't so much for lifestyle, it's primarily for running. So for that reason, it looks like Adidas is using a more durable and thicker knit to give you a little bit more support. Unlike the London and Paris pairs that have a couple different colors on the upper, it looks like the NYC pair is pretty much all black. There are a few very subtle hits of blue that are speckled into the knit, hits that you honestly wouldn't see from a distance. Me personally, I kind of prefer the colorway of the London pair with the light gray upper and sort of the blue accents, but I think honestly for New York City black was probably the right way to go because the city is so dirty and if you're running in the city every single day the upper is going to get messed up. Like most Adidas running shoes the upper comes in a one-piece booty construction which means the shoe doesn't have a separate tongue it's all a sock like fit. Continuing back on the sneaker you get to these black overlapping lines called tension patches. They're basically thick pieces of fuse overlay that add more support in the upper where you need it and the reason these are overlapping and seemingly spread out in a random sort of way is because what Adidas did was map the foot of a lot of runners and found exactly where they needed the support. Another nice thing about these tension patches is that they actually overlap where the lace eyelets are which is a really nice thing for durability because over time these laces won't pull through the material like they might in prime knit. Also by having the laces weave through the tension patches it also allows for a much more tight and snug fit because you're actually pulling the tension patches together when you tighten the laces. As for the laces they actually come in black with 3M accents. Underneath the laces on the center of the tongue you've got this patch that says Adidas NYC. Something that's kind of interesting about this patch is that the patch actually comes with an NFC chip so if you ever want to unlock more information or learn more about the shoe all you have to do is tap your phone against that chip and it all pops up. You may need a specific app or something, I just kind of scanned the barcode on the box. Inside the shoe, you've got a black sock liner with some pretty nice padding around the heel. There is actually a pillow of padding underneath this NYC patch, but other than that, the rest of the upper, your foot is pretty much just up against the knit. The insole of the shoe comes in bright orange with the Adidas logo in white on the heel. As for fit, the AM for NYC does seem to fit true to size. Obviously, the aim for the future is to create customized padding for individual people. However, at the moment, that's not totally possible, especially when you're mass manufacturing a shoe. But for a shoe that wasn't customized exactly to my foot, it still feels pretty good. I have more narrow to regular width size feet, and the mid Foot did feel pretty good so if you're a wide footer you might want to try a slightly bigger size however I did notice that the shoe was a tad long it didn't feel bad and honestly at first I didn't even notice it but when I tried to feel where my toe was it was a little bit farther back than it usually is in most size 9 sneakers but like I said when I was running in the shoe and just generally walking around in it it felt really good and it did feel true to size continuing back on the shoe from the midfoot to the heel you've got another tension patch that acts as a heel cup the heel counter area is actually pretty stiff and provides some nice lockdown which I appreciated moving around to the back of the shoe you've got another black tension patch running up the back of the sneaker. Something that I found a little bit interesting about the AM for NYC is that the pull tab is actually bigger than it is on most other Adidas sneakers. It's also got this sort of cup shape so it's really easy to pull your foot into the shoe. It's not plush or padded like the Ultra Boost is but it sits far enough away from your ankle that you never really feel it. One thing that I really like about the AM for NYC is that the entire upper is actually fuse bonded to the midsole. So unlike regular shoes where you actually glue the different parts of the sneaker together, this shoe is constructed in a different way by fuse bonding. I've got to be honest, I'm not really sure what that entails. I don't know if it's going 
going to be stronger than glue or better than glue in a couple different ways. I'm not sure. The one thing I did notice though is that there isn't any glue marks around the base of the upper. And that's like the first time I've ever seen that with a black sneaker. Continuing down the shoe, you get to the new boost midsole. Right off the bat, you can tell from the shape that there's a lot more boost in this shoe than a regular Ultra Boost. As I mentioned before, Adidas added more boost in the forefoot, specifically for the NYC version of the shoe. Comfort wise, the ride of the midsole is excellent. If you've never tried boost and you're a sneakerhead or you're a runner, it's one of those technologies you just have to try. It's one of the most, if not the most comfortable midsole cushion I've ever experienced. And it's been that way for me since 2015 when I tried my first Boost shoe, and honestly, Adidas has only improved it since then. Just try Boost, come on, what are you doing? Crazy. Another thing I found kind of interesting about this shoe is that the texture of the Boost midsole is different than your regular Boost sneakers. Unlike regular Boost where you have a semi-gloss finish and a couple nubs along the sneaker, this time around it's very matte and has a bunch of tiny little nubs. And there's no real performance reason for that. The reason for that is just the difference in manufacturing techniques. And finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you get to your black rubber outsole and your floating torsion bar. Unlike Adidas' regular torsion system which is glued onto the midsole itself, this new floating torsion bar system isn't actually glued so it doesn't make the midfoot any stiffer. And so in theory it should provide a noticeable difference on heel to toe transitions. Overall, the Adidas AM for NYC is a pretty cool sneaker. I like the way the sneaker looks. It's not crazy eye-catching, so it's not gonna be something you really stunt in, but I do actually like the minimal look, and the thing that really sells me on this sneaker is all the brand new technology that went into making the shoe and into the shoe itself. One thing I love about Adidas in particular is that they're always innovating and trying new things. Not saying that every other sneaker company isn't trying new things and innovating, because they definitely are, but the push for innovation and running that Adidas has made over the last five years is pretty cool to watch. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's put these guys on feet and see how they look. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the AM for NYC and whether you'd like to grab a pair for yourself. Also, once again, huge thank you to Adidas NYC for all the love they've been showing me recently. It's very much appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.